So with that, I'll turn it over to Rod. So great. Welcome. Thank you so much, Professor DeVos. It's an honor, honor to be here. And thrilled, thrilled to be with all of you. So um, I, I can is a hybrid, right? I mean, one of the questions would be why, you know, do you even need a centralized coordinator for domain names and addresses? And uh, some people would say, you know, you don't. So if you look at, uh, you know, actually, let's, let's put ICANN in, the, you know, not even the middle. We'll put ICANN in the bottom, okay? So let's get to how we deal with countries. Actually, there's 200, these 240, what we call CCTL DLDs or country code top level domains. Those are really largely independent. I mean, we don't even have contracts with them. Do we have a relationship? Yes. In fact, we control the pointer to them. Okay? So someone has to decide where does that assignment go? In Jordan, okay, or somewhere else. Now, if we were an intergovernmental organization, that would be done through the national governments. But that's not how the internet developed and evolved. It developed through universities, through the private sector and collaboration. And governments are also stakeholders in the process. So when you look at these relationships, and they, by the way, have their own governance organization that fits into us, which is, happens to be called the Country Code Name Supporting Organization, or the CCNSO. And I know this is horrible jargon. But if you, how many of you worked in government or think you ever may work in government in your life? Okay, so jargon soup is your life, right? So you know what it's like. So, country, so this organization is largely self-governing, develops the policies for how country code operators work. That feeds into the ICANN board. Staff provides a facilitation process on policy. But the board, which itself is a multi-stakeholder group, the board. So we have the CCNSO for running the country codes. Then the addresses are something called the ASO, the Address Supporting Organization. And there's five regional registries around the world. So there's, there's you know, America. There's Latin America, what we call LACNIC. There's what's called RIPE, which is Europe, Middle East. There's Asia Pacific. Doug, help me. Thank you. Of course, Africa, the most recent one that was created. And they then go and allocate addresses down to, there's 30,000 30, ISPs and corporations that get big blocks of internet addresses and hand them out. Go ahead. Don't you think that if maybe the internet administration decentralizes anymore, that um, regions, if they get the power to assign their own um, like names, they'll start doing it in their regional languages, and then that could actually divide the globalization that the internet has a little bit more, because yeah. I, I won't be able to type in Chinese characters, for instance. Sure. And if you were Chinese and you couldn't type in Chinese characters, how would you feel about I? Yeah, you wouldn't like that, right? Yeah. Or if you're in Arabic, spoke Arabic, right? So lo and behold, so one of the processes of opening up and liberalization right now is these CCTDLDs were all in Latin characters, not because anyone was judgmental, but because it was the only standard. ASCII was the only standard when the internet engineers developed the protocol in 73, and they made that design choice. Today we have Unicode, okay? And Unicode has 100,000 characters in it. ASCII only has 37, roughly. So they did that. So now what we're doing, we're opening this up through Unicode gets translated through a tool called Punicode into ASCII, and so we're now introducing, right now, literally, Last week, the first four international domain names got approved for countries that are not in Latin characters. Egypt, Saudi Arabia, UAE, and Russia. And we have 12 other countries that have applied. And that's just the beginning of opening up the internet to foreign languages because absolutely it would seem that everyone should have a right to do it in their own character. Yeah, well, I please. Think, I think you actually kind of answered the question in this explanation that it really isn't a weakness more as much as it's a necessity. You have to have a foundation. I mean, even the most decentralized. Al-Qaeda's foundation is Islam. Mm -hmm. uh, Wikipedia's foundation is the software. This facilitates the whole concept of wiki or whatever whatever it is they do that allows them to do all sure. the pieces. Media wiki. There is, there is something the that yeah. forms that core that you can't exist without. And in, this, in the case of, of the internet, it could be the Unicode that you mentioned or it could be the standards that you set across. And that's the difficulty of standards because on one sense it does sort of reduce that decentralized nature, but if done properly, it actually facilitates decentralization to a large degree. Exa absolutely, and see, so, I mean, the question's always valid, can you decentralize further? And, and, and some people have proposed, for example, I can, you don't get to decide anymore, okay? L let the countries do it alone, but then other people, including those countries, say, no, don't do that, don't do that, you know? 
the private, this has been working fine, you know, keep it going, keep it open, because they're concerned that being an intergovernmental organization will mean governments as the only stakeholders will decide everything. And the track records of governments innovating technical standards is not great. I mean, it tend to, 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 tends to be fairly slow and, and has a lot of costs. And so it's actually fortuitous in some way. We view, this is much more decentralized, that the U.S. government said, we're going to give this to the world, but in the form of a, of a, of a, uh, a, a multi-stakeholder system. But, you know, it's always a question, you know, what's, what's the right balance? But, but fundamentally, the, the benefit of having a coordination body is that the Internet is unified today for the most part. And there are balkanization attempts right now because of what you mentioned, which is some countries were upset, they couldn't work in their own languages, are setting up their own routes, and we're starting to, um, they're building out extensive sets of websites that you can't access. Now why can't they, you can't access it? Because it's not in the root. It's in their ad adapted version of the root. And what happens if everybody starts adapting the root differently? It's no longer unified. It's no longer point to point. My email can't get to you because you're in a totally different naming and addressing system. So another way to look at ICANN is that it's the only part of the process of the internet that needs to be centralized to keep the unity hanging, hanging together. I mean, I think we're up on time, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, we're I'll let you do your wrap. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>